वेलकम माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ क्लास टेन माय रिवीजन क्लास फॉर लेसन नंबर वन द रिपोर्ट ऑफ एटीन फिफ्टी सेवन सम पॉइंट्स एज आई मेंशन इन द बोर्ड प्लीज लुक एट इट कॉजेस एंड कॉन्सिक्वेंसेस मोनोपोली ट्रेड एंड कॉमर्स एक्सप्लाइटेशन ऑफ द पीजेंस एक्सपेंशनिस्ट पॉलिसी इल ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ द रूलिंग क्लास first point causes and consequences what what are the causes what are the consequences the causes and consequences of the revolt of 1857 why were what was the reason the revolt of 1857 took place what were the consequences behind it and what were the consequences of the revolt of 1857 now i am going to explain you know the revolt of 1857 ultimately took place throughout different parts of india there are certain reasons behind it you know the british policy of exploitation the british policy of annexation the british policy of monopoly trade and of course the british policy of drain of wealth these were the most important factors which led to the revolt of 1857 besides there was another you know factor which led to the revolt of 1857 the most important factor was military cause introduction of uh, one uh, uh, rifle that very rifle Uh, should not have been given to the soldiers for use because the fat of this that with the you know the rifle was made of uh, the fat of pig and cow and there was a system of opening the cartridges by cutting it uh, through their teeth but both the two you know uh, uh, animals Pig and cow. Cow was the cow was the cow was an animal for the Hindu secret animal for the Hindus and pig was an animal neglected by the Muslims. Naturally, it harmed the sentiments of Hindu and Muslim supporters. So they refused to use the cartridges of Enfield rifle. So it had become also a great factor. The revolt of 1857 took place. so these are the important factors my dear students you have to keep in it keep it in your mind and write it properly now what were the consequences there are certain consequences behind the revolt of 1857 number 1 the revolt of 1857 ultimately was suppressed by the british although some uh, in, uh, initial uh, achievements were there on the part of the indian soldiers but later on it was uh, uh, suppressed by the uh, british because there was no uh, unity among the sepoys there was no unity among the indians the group of a section of people remained silent because they thought that the revolt would be suppressed ultimately and they did not want to uh, you know uh, destroy they did not want to destroy their internal threat they wanted to uh, uh, strengthen their internal and external threat in making good relations with the british that's why they did not want to be the enemies of the british so large section of indian traders uh, were remain the uh, traders remain silent there uh, no economic uh, facilities and economic support uh, came on the part of them anyway next point monopoly trade and commerce monopoly trade and commerce you know as soon as the industrial revolution took place in england england established their colony first in india although in other parts of the world they had established their colonies but india had become one of the most important trading centers of the british house 
the British did not. The British not only established their colony in India, but also made it their trading post, trading centers, and uh, monopolized their trade in India. How? Initially, the British decided to utilize Indian natural resources in order to meet the growing demand of their own factories and industries in England. And at the same time, the British also utilized the chief laborers of India, uh, appointed them as laborers in their factories and industries. Besides, the British destroy Indian handicraft industries. So the peace and the artisans who are totally dependent on their handicraft industry or small scale industries. As soon as the British manufactured goods flooded Indian market, the British destroyed Indian handicraft industries. Indian handicraft industries, Indian handicraft industry lost its former glory and image because of the British manufactured goods. The British manufactured goods which were produced from machines, its qualities were superior, its prices also were less. Naturally, Indian handicraft products could not compete with British manufactured goods. So, Indian handicraft industry failed to compete with them and ruined and totally ruined. Artisans, craftsmen, they all became jobless people. And British monopolized their trade in India, captured, flooded the large market of India. British manufactured goods, you know, initially were accepted by the people of India since its qualities and since its quality and uh, price prices. Quality and prices had become a great factor for the Indian people. They were attracted and started purchasing British manufactured goods instead of Indian Swadeshi goods or Indian handicraft goods. By this way, East India Company established a monopoly over trade and commerce. On the other hand, Indian handicraft groups failed to compete with them. Cottage industry became un unprofitable. Craftsmen lost their means and jobs, as I mentioned earlier. British discouraged craftsmen from buying raw materials and slowly destroyed the indigenous in factories of India. So this impoverishment of craftsmen culminated into great resentment towards the British. The British had no regret for this. The British had no regret for that. Why? Because they realized that what they were practicing was wrong. But they must safeguard their own interests. Next point, my dear student, exploitation of the peasants. Exploitation of the peasants. You know, India was from the very, very beginning a country of agrarian economy. And a majority of its population depended on their income from agriculture. They all resided in villages. They all were peasants and farmers. So with the advent of the British power, with the advent of the British annexation of territories, farmers, peasants were forced to grow only cash crops such as indigo, opium and cotton at the cost of food grains of funnies. But they were compelled to do it so. Why? Because the company brought these crops at the lowest possible rates, which meant the farmer made almost no profit, but company made themselves, uh, you know, company made themselves, uh, you know, 
made themselves happy, rich, prosperous. Food grains and vegetables were expensive. As the scare as not many farmers grew, grew there anymore. This led to starvation, deaths and famines. In addition to high expenses and scarcity of food grains, farmers had to pay high taxes to the British which was extracted by the oppressive uh, zamindars. So crops like indigo reduced the quality, reduced the quality of the soil and made it un unfit for farming food crops. The companies you know, mishandling of the peasantry clearly shows that the company preferred short-term profits for themselves over long-term concerns for the Indian people. The Indian peasants and farmers only for that reason did not want to cultivate cash crops like indigo opium. They realized that it was profitable to the British manufacturer, British spread traders, but unpro unprofitable to the Indian peasants and farmers. Cash crops like cotton, indigo, once cultivated, they reduce the fertility of the soil. Naturally, peasants and farmers who were forced to cultivate it in their own lands were greatly, greatly, were greatly, greatly loser. Neither they could have any objection, neither they could object, sorry, neither they could object against that system, nor could work attentively nor could nor could work wholeheartedly in their agricultural lands but they were compelled to do so this act of misery created resentment among indian peasants and farmers british policy of exploitation made the peasants and farmers of india very much aggressive, a number of local movements started against the British policy of exploitation, a number of Indian writers started writing against the oppressive system of indigo cultivation. During that time when they were start they, when they were trying to agitate against the British, there was no Mahatma Gandhi, there was no Netaji Shwashtra Bhush. During that time, only a group of Indian intelligent, in, Indian, uh, you know, uh, intellectuals were there who motivated Indian peasants and farmers by writing a number of articles against the British oppression. Number one, Dinobondu Mitro, in his famous novel Nil Darpan, he encouraged Indian peasants and farmers motivated them not to pay a single amount of tax against the act of oppression, against uh, the system of uh, cultivating only indigo and opium instead of rice, wheat, maize, barley, as per the choices of Indian peasants and farmers. They encourage Indian peasants and farmers to raise hue and cry to protest against that system as a result of it many 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 you know plays were staged on the basis of the writing of Neil Darpan of Dinabandhu Mitra in different stages of Kolkata in different theatres of Kolkata which made public opinion about public opinion among the Indian Bengali intelligentsia, Indian Bengal intellectuals. They realize that, they realize the miserable conditions of Indian peasants and farmers and strongly oppose that system. Ultimately, there came certain additional alteration over the system. 
of operation by the British. The next one, my dear students, expansionist policy of the expansionist policy of the British. The British adopted the policy of expanse. The first and foremost example is dishonesty. There was a peace treaty between I.O. and the British East India Company. Under the terms of the peace treaty, the Nawab of I.O. agreed to pay regular annual tribute to British East India Company provided the British would not interfere in the personal affairs of that state I.O. But suddenly, the British forcefully annexed I.O. by breaking the terms of the peace treaty signed between the Nawab and British East India Company. Now why was it? What was the excuse the British had given? The excuse the British had given was misgovernance. The Nawab of Ayod failed to establish law and order in his own state, Ayod. Due to weak governance, Ayod was annexed. This was the excuse of the British East India Company. But he was absolutely wrong. The British adopted the policy of annexation and forcefully annexed one state that was Ayod, which was from the very, very state Ayod. That very Ayod, from the very, very beginning, was loyal to the British, peaceful, and signed a treaty with the British. Considering that the state Ayod would be never would never be annexed by the British, but the British broke broke the arms and annexed it by bringing false allegations against the Nawab of Ayod. It was a great resentment in Indian history. Almost all section of people, almost all states of Indian people, grew offended against the decision of annexation of Ayo, especially people of Ayo. Because almost, because a large section of people, uh, uh, they were working in the British East, British East India Company Army, they all were from Ayo. Naturally, they unitedly, they unitedly organized the revolt of 1857. Major portion of people were from Ayo because of the insult of their Nawab, because of annexation of I.O. forcefully by the British. Besides, the British adapted the policy of the doctrine of lapse, the policy of subsidiary alliance, the policy of subsidiary alliance by well Leslie, the policy of doctrine of lapse by Lord Dalhousie, annexed a number of Indian states, so the ruling class, they were not happy, they were not, they all were unhappy and their resentment reached East India Company headquarters and when the, when the revolt was suppressed, the British East India Company headquarters decided to abolish the rule of East India Company in India and introduce a new rule under Queen Victoria in India. Later on we shall discuss. Next point, ill treatment of the ruling class, my dear students. Ill treatment of the ruling class. The ruling class means Indian, uh, you know, Indian states, were not happy with the policy of the British. The ruling class of India and their resentment made them very much aggressive. Why? Because the British officials of the East India Company appeared. The British officials of the East India Company, uh, you know, appeared adamant on humiliating and disrespecting the ruling families of the subcontinent. 
they had no respect for Indian ruling class families. But this respect for them, negligence for them, because the British East India Company, because the British official considered themselves superior to them and inferior, superior, considered themselves superior to Indian ruling class and considered them to be inferior to them. Why? Because they were particularly, they all were particularly depended on the British, the British were their ruler. So they were bound to accept the Britishers to be their, to be their, uh, you know, uh, to be their, their, you know, master. They were their masters and Indian ruling class people who once upon a time ruled uh, the country from their respective provinces, from their respective states. They all now, beyond, they all now, they all, they all, now became dependent on the Britishers. So they were bound to follow the instructions of the Britishers, whatever they were communicated. That's why there came a tendency to disrespect Indian ruling class families. For example, Bahadur Shah for the last Mughal emperor, the last Mughal emperor Bahadur Shah Zafar was insulted by many ways. Peshwa Bajirao II, Jews adopted son Nana Sahib also was uh, humiliated at the hands of the British. Naturally they decided to antagonize the British in the revolt of 1857. A group of you know people especially uh, Indian, uh, Indian uh, you know soldiers who were under British army they all I requested Bahadur Shah Zafar to accept the leadership of Sipai Mutiny. Initially, Bahadur Shah Zafar refused to accept the leadership, but later on, considered, considering such insult, what he had to digest, he ultimately gave his consent and took the leadership of the Indian Sipais in the revolt of 1857. And another one, who was he? He was Nana Sahib. Nana Sahib was the adopted son of Peshwa Bajirao II. After the death of Peshwa Bajirao II, the adopted son of Peshwa Bajirao II, Nana Sahib, Nana Sahib's uh, pension was suddenly stopped by the British. Moreover, Nana Sahib's demand to be the legal hire in the throne of Kanpu was declared to be illegal by the British. So Nana Sahib felt very much insulted and decided to organize the revolt against the British. His assistant Tatiya Tope assured him to help. Tatiya Tope assured not only Nana Sahib, Tatiya Tope uh, promised to help not only Nana Sahib but also Rania, Rania of Dhasi, Lakshmi Bhai. So both of them were helped by Tantya Tope. Although the revolts were suppressed by the British, but Rania of Dhasi sacrificed her life while fighting for the independence of her own state, Dhasi, and became a martyr and Nana Sahib left the place and took shelter in Nepal but Tatya Tope, he also left but ultimately he was uh, captured, he was caught and was given death sentence and ultimately he was hanged by the British. And Bahadur Shah Zafar, who was insulted by the British and decided to uh, lead the revolt of 1857. After the suppression of the revolt, Bahadur Shah Zafar also was caught and he was, he was sent to uh, a fort. He was sent to a fort and while staying there, he died broken heart. 
Bahadur Shah Zafar's life came to an end. The last Mughal Emperor Bahadur Shah Zafar, while staying at Rangoon, he died. We died of melancholy, frustrations, reduced to a skeleton, and then the, uh, the glory and image of the Mughals came to an end forever. The last Mughal Emperor died of British humiliation, British, British humiliation and oppression. So this is the history of India, the British East India Company, how much terrible how much oppressive, how much unkind, unsympathetic the history showed in history is a, a history is a written document. By reading this, we come to know about it, and we feel very much insulted. We feel rather, we feel rather, you know, <coughs> we feel sympathy for the last Mughal Emperor Bahadur Shah. We feel sympathy for the queen, uh, for the <coughs> Rani of Jhansi. We feel sympathy for Nana Sahib, and we feel sympathy for all other uh, ru ruling class families who were insulted by the British and organized the revolt against the British in 1857 and sacrificed their lives. Up to this, my dear students. Next day, the remaining part of this lesson. Next, during my next revision class, I shall re-explain the remaining part, the remaining points. And in, in the meantime, if you have any doubt, you please note it down in your copies and ask me question during my live class. Thank you.